Hey guys, it's Scott. In this video, I want to take a look at the 2022 Breeders' Cup. And if I want to see my little dead period that we've had is over with, you know, now it's time to look forward to the Breeders' Cup. And then the prep race with the Kentucky Derby is going to start picking up. So there's be a lot to talk about for the next few months. And, you know, I'm very excited to get back to it. And in this video, we're going to talk about the three months like the winners I've seen in some of these Breeders' Cup races. And you got a very solid feel. I think this is probably the most confidence I've had as far as, you know, picking exactness, trifecta, all around, you know, wagering for what I like looking at potential horses that are being pointed these races. So I'm very excited for it coming up in a couple of weeks. And my first most likely winner, I think, is going to be Rock for Bob Baffert in the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile. You know, he's three for three so far, won the American Pharaoh, the Del Mar Futurity. Uh, this horse has been a ball of speed, and, and it's made especially got a 109 Equibase speed figure, which is one of the tops for two-year-olds so far. And I think this horse, you know, you can kind of see the field. I pull this up off of Vada. And you got, you know, Gulfport, Loggings, Forte, Blazing Sevens. Uh, so it's through a very good field of, you know, two-year-olds so far. You don't know which one of these, you know, by the time Kentucky Derby rolls around, will take that step forward. But Baffert's had some success in this race. You know, he's won with a game winner a couple years ago, and then he got second with Salamini. So I think Bob Baffert knows how to point a horse to this race and potentially do something. And, you know, the horse is out of arrogant who was, you know, had a very good stretch a few years ago where he just – you know, was dominating everything in sight. And that's why I think K-Rock's going to be the most likely winner of this race. And I would say you play, you know, him on top. And uh, it's getting a little ahead of myself, but for a long shot pick, I kind of like Blazing Sevens a little bit. But, you know, maybe put them two together or put K-Rock on top over Blazing Sevens and maybe, you know, a couple long shots. I hope, you know, a long shot can get second. But anyway, that's how I think K-Rock's most likely winner of the race. And that's maybe a Jackie's War, who I think is my second most likely winner. And, when I see Jackie's War, I think a lot of Matoli. And Matoli won the Breeders' Cup Sprint, you know, a couple years ago. And Matoli is one of those that was really good. But, you know, every so often you just thought one of them races just had a clunker to it. And there was no reason why. You'd always come back, bounce back, and get back to the old Matoli. But it's just enough, though, a seed of doubt in your mind that, you know, when it came to non-big races, you know, was this going to be the race where you threw in that clunker? And that's kind of what Jackie's War. On Jackie's War is best that he easily destroys this field. You know, it's not really... You got last year's Breeders' Cup with Aloha West, but that's not the same Aloha West, in my opinion, that ran last year. I know Cody's Wish beat him at Saratoga, but I think Jackie's Work could potentially turn the table. And the distance would be going short. I think that was seven furlongs in that race at Saratoga. And then you got Jack Christopher, who, you know, a very good three-year-old for Chad Brown, but I'm not sure he's on Jackie's Warrior speed level good. But I think this is Jackie's Warrior's race to lose. And because of that last race, I think you might see some you know, decent odds on it, maybe two to one. But even that might be kind of pushing it. But you give me seven to five, eight to five. It's one of these races where you can put, you know, seventy, eighty dollars on them, and you know, potentially, you know, add a good payout to your day. And I think that's how I'm going to play Jackie's Warrior. Maybe put, you know, somebody like a couple long shots underneath for small exactas. But you know, I think Jackie's Warrior is probably my whole entire best bet of the Breeders' Cup. I think would be Jackie's Warrior to win the sprint, and that's going to bring me to flight line and. Uh, Flatline's the big boy, and if he runs to these speed figures that he's been getting, you know, there's nobody that's got a chance for this horse. Uh, if there's a little kink in the armor, it's that John Sauer, I don't think, has had the best luck when it comes to shipping horses, uh, you know, across country. And you can see his lowest speed figure came in the Met Mile at Belmont, and that was when he got shipped over. And then he did win the Breeders' Cup with Sauer a couple years ago. But, you know, the knock on Sauer has been when it comes to shipping horses. He's not exactly the best at it. But this horse, I mean, he's done nothing when you watch him vision on the racetrack. I mean, he won his last race by 20 lengths in the Pacific Classic. And, you know, it's every race he's just been really good. And, you know, so far you got uh, Life is Good Point, and that will be kind of the one-two matchup. Uh, you also got Taba for Bob Baffer. I'm not sure Taba's quite on uh, flight lines level. You got Olympiad, and uh, Olympiad had that one clunker. I believe it was in the Whitney. And if you can forgive that effort, Olympiad could certainly be a – you know, contender for the exactor trifecta. And uh, Epicenter is also pointed to the race. And I, I think Epicenter could potentially maybe run in the dirt mile because I know uh, a few years ago, uh, Aspie used to have gun runner. And he does gun runner in the classic to put him in the dirt mile, you know, maybe not wanting to take on the big ones. He had an arrogant California chrome that year run. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, maybe Epicenter not be in this race, even though he's, you know, in the futures. But Nonetheless, I think Flatline is the most likely winner of the race. And I think he picked Flatline on top, stopped looking for horses, you know, underneath. And 
that's the three horse I'm going to go with on Breeders' Cup Day. Kind of, you know, made my best bets. And that's all for this. There's going to be plenty more to come between now and the Breeders' Cup. It's going to be fun.